everyone, this is Clarice, your host for today's episode. Last November 10, and every November 10 each year, all races and nations celebrate the United Nations World Science Day for Peace and Development. This celebration reminds humanity of the role and importance of science in our day-to-day -day living. It also highlights the need to engage the wider public in debates and discussions on emerging scientific issues, innovations, technology, and know-how. Inspired by the United Nations worldwide celebration, the Philippine Sports Commission Women in Sports opened a three-day women's sports coaching and leadership virtual training and seminar that had amazingly gathered almost 3,000 participants composed mostly of women's sports coaches, mentors, athletes, PE and sports teachers in the academe, sports leaders in the communities, and various sports professionals and practitioners. All gathered and immersed in three days of vibrant, active, and soulful discussion about sports coaching and developing a champion mindset. This milestone gathering has underscored the essence and substance of sports beyond its being a science as it also basically highlights sport as an art, a human activity that is a training ground for discipline, respect, and desirable human values. These are enough attributes to inspire and trigger human development towards its full potential for athletic excellence. And in this episode, we are showcasing significant snippets of the discussion on becoming a good coach by Coach Pat Puzon. For the next hour, Coach Puzon shares contents of a book she authored entitled Becoming a Great Coach. In a capsule, the discussion and sharing evolve around sports as not just physical but also emotional and mental as ingredients that make one a probable champion. Before I give to you Coach Pat, let's listen to Commissioner Celia Kiram for an inspiring cuento about Coach Pat Puzon on building a great coach. Ang aking babahaging kwento sa inyo ngayon ay ang mga nakakawiling kaalaman tungkol sa isa nating babaeng kababayan na ipinanganak noong April 9, 1970 sa Pilipinas, ngunit sa kasalukuyan na nindirahan sa Australia. Siya ay si Coach Patricia Albano Concon Puson na may akda ng librong Becoming a Great Coach. Napakalaki ang naiambag ni Coach Patricia or Coach Pat sa larangan ng sport. Isa siyang mahusay na manglalaro sa Junior ITF Philippines mula taong 1980 hanggang 1986. Naging isa siyang Level 3 Coach ng Australian Tennis Professional Coach Association or ATPCA mula 2013 hanggang 2016. Nagtuloy siya sa pagsasanay ng mga atleta hanggang nakamit niya ang pinakamataas na antas sa coaching ng Australia na tinaguri ang Master Pro Level 3. Sa pagdaan ng panahon, na-realize ni Coach Pat ang kakaiba at mas mahalagang tungkulin na nais niyang isulong at gampanan sa kanyang buhay. At yan ang tungkulin na maging isang champion maker. Pangarap ni Coach Pat na makatulong sa mga atletang Pilipino na makamit o maabot ang kanilang pangarap at buong kakayahan sa larangan ng sport. Ito ang kanyang naging malaking inspiration upang itatag ni Coach Pat ang Max Crunket Tennis Academy sa Australia. Tumayo rin siya bilang director at head coach nito mula 2014. Nais na niyang paigtingin ang maging mas makabuluhan at kanyang pangarap na patulungan ng mga mahihirap na kabataan at mga naghahangad na maging isang coach sa Pilipinas. Mula 2014, 
Tumulong ang Max Crunket Tennis Academy sa pag-sponsor ng mga atleta ng tennis sa iba't ibang lugar sa Pilipinas. Ang mga atletang ito ay nanalo ng maraming titulo sa ilalim ng Tennis Australia rankings mula sa bronze hanggang platinum. Ilan sa mga nasabing atleta na natulungan ng Max Crunket Tennis Academy ay nagdala ng karangalan sa Pilipinas ay sina Alexa Joy Miriam sa ITF Juniors at John David Veles na nanalo sa Under-14 Girls at Under-16 Boys sa kompetisyon ng Asian Tennis Federation or ATF. Kamakailan lang, gumawa ng kasaysayan si Coach Pat sa Pilipinas nang tumayo siya bilang pangunahing resource person sa women coaching and leadership training and seminar na inorganisa ng Philippine Sports Commission Women in Sports nitong nakaraang November 10 to 12, 2021. Kulang-kulang 3,000 katao mula sa iba't ibang parte ng Pilipinas ang lumahok sa webinar. Ito ang pinakamalaking pagtitipon ng mga kababaihan sa isang virtual seminar o training sa kasaysayan ng Pilipinas sa larangan ng sport. Diyan nagawakas ang kwento tungkol sa ating mahal na kababayan na si Coach Patricia or Pat Puson. Muli, ito ang inyong Commissioner Kiram na walang sawang maghahatid ng kwentong kababaihan, kwento para sa kaalaman at karunungan sa sport. Not at your best? You may be dehydrated. You need to carry sweat. It replaces the electrolytes you've lost and helps you perform at your best. Be at your best with Pocari Sweat. Pocari Sweat! I would like to extend my gratitude to my kababayans, to the international coaches, Coach Pat and Coach Henry, for sharing their valuable time with us in the next three days. Your expertise and resources you will share are critically necessary to generate women coach leaders capable of beautifully integrating and feeding the art of leadership within the realms of science that is sports. Today, all nations celebrate the United Nations World Science Day for Peace and Development. Right here in this virtual hall, we would like to highlight the important role of sports as a science and to the growth of a champion which requires scientific preparations. Advanced congratulations to all of the participants and thank you for choosing to be with us for the three-day women's leadership training and coaching seminar. You are all lucky to be joining to a sports ecosystem that could fill in your coaching toolkit with the abundance of inspiration and know-how by the two of the best international coach mentors and coach leaders. The pandemic has not stopped the Philippine Sports Commission from developing a greater number of coach leaders. Our determination, our commitment to transcend the young and rise above the impact of the current health crisis is the push that inspires us to navigate today's sports landscape to a new dimension of building champions of enriching innovative training, and most of all, handling and managing wholesome and holistic Filipino athletes. The 40 million Filipino children and young people are a large pool of potential athletic talent, waiting for that great chance to be guided and trained in sports by competent coaches. With our country's geographic profile of water and land terrains, there's no reason to stop playing. And with a rich ground filled with athletic potentials and guided by capable coach leaders, there's no reason we cannot create champions. 
This is a great challenge to everyone. Our future champions depend on our young generation and polishing them to their highest performance level rests on your shoulders. So please listen and observe intently as we learn more about human skills, imaginations, expressions, communications, and emotions as a leader coach, because the essence of great leadership is about influence and motivation. The gathering of almost 3,000 participants in today's sports training is a milestone to Philippine sports. This is so far is the biggest virtual convention in sports in the history. And for that, may I congratulate our PSU women in sports for organizing a significant gathering of this magnitude, composed of 2,404 women, for 18 men, coach leaders, and 46 from LGBTQ sector. With a new crop of women coaches generated by this training, the outlook is bright for Philippine sports. Welcome to the discussion and sharing about becoming a great coach by Coach Pat. We would like to inform everyone that what you will be watching here for the next 45 minutes is an extract from the three-day seminar brought to you by Coach Pat. An edited but longer version of this seminar will be posted at our Rise Up Shape Up YouTube account. The importance of understanding human behavior through mental health. In this module, you will be introduced to terminology and concept relating to mental health and well-being. And as an outcome, normalize the use of mental health language. This topic will help build the parameters around these terms of discussing misconceptions and stigma or stigmatism. And by providing an overview of common symptoms. This topic also touches on community well-being by including information on common symptoms in others. So, sa, sa topic natin for today, we are going to help those ones who hasn't done psychology. Develop your understanding of mental health and well-being. Define mental health and well-being. So, definition and develop is two different things. Consider why mental health and well-being matters. It is important. Understand misconceptions surrounding mental health. Explore how developing your understanding of mental health will reduce community stigma. And comparing the differences between mental health and well-being. Magkaiba po yan, ha? mental health and well-being is two different entities. Identify and understand some symptoms of mental health, distress, and recognize when they manifest in yourself or others. It's an expression. What is a mental health? Okay. It's an expression we use every day. So it might surprise you that the term mental health is frequently misunderstood. Mental health is often, often used as substitute for mental health conditions, such as, number one, depression. Number two, anxiety conditions. Kitsufrina and others. According to the WH organization or World Health Organization, however, mental health is a state of well-being in which every individual realizes his or her own potential. You can cope with the normal stresses of life. Correction sa mga tao na you can, you know, living life without stress. It just says from WHO, you can cope with the normal stresses of life, can work productively and fruitfully, even through stress, and is able to make a contribution to her or his communities. So rather than being about what's the problem, it's really about what's going well. It's not living life without stress. Hindi po yung Nagigising tayo, wala tayong stress. Actually, stressful nga yung buhay natin ngayon eh, because everyone is locked down. Tama bang isipin natin na ang mental health, being mentally health aware of what's happening with our daily life is somebody who doesn't have stress. Wrong. 
it is somebody or tayo, tayo, kaya nating makapag-desisyon sa tama o sa mali kahit na may problemang pinagdadaanan. That's when you say that you're mentally healthy because you're able to positively overcome your stress and be able to work within your community. Because if you cannot manage any any situation under stress, you shouldn't be a coach. Neither you shouldn't be a teacher. Okay? Because you cannot lead your path if you don't know how to handle your stress. All right. Mental health is about wellness rather than illness. Okay? Again, mental health is about wellness. Wellness. Wellness natin. Physical, mental, emotional wellness. Okay? Nothing to do with scientific sickness rather than illness. Okay? To make things a bit clearer, some experts have tried coming up with different terms to explain the difference between mental health and mental health conditions. Phrases such as good mental health, positive mental health, mental well-being, subjective well-being, and even happiness have been proposed by various people to emphasize that mental health is about wellness rather than illness. While some say this has been helpful, others argue that using more words to describe the same thing just adds to the confusion, which is true because there's no concise definition of mental health. There's none. As a result, others have tried to explain the difference by talking about a continuum where mental health is at one end of the spectrum, scientific to represented by feeling good and functioning well. Positive, negative, positive. While mental health conditions or mental illness are at the other represented by symptoms that affect people's thoughts, feelings, or behavior. Hence, or the reason, remember, I'm going to explain, represented by symptoms that affect people's thoughts, feelings, and behavior caused by medications, caused by imbalance of brain work, cost of emotional imbalance due to medication. So yan ang ibig sabihin yan. Research, research shows that high levels of mental health are associated with increased learning, creativity, and productivity, more pro-social behavior, and positive social relationships, and with improved physical health and life expectancy. So kung maganda ang maganda ang, ang bungad ng araw sa'yo. Di ba? Pag masaya ka, wala kang masyadong iniisip, wala kang masyadong problema, mas tumatagal ang buhay natin. The more you, the more you problem things that you, you are not in control of, the more you get sick. The more you get sicker because your system becomes weaker. Does it make sense? In contrast, mental health conditions can cause distress. Okay? Distress. So, ibig sabihin nun, on day to day, pag nagising tayo, masaya tayo, lang problema, everybody is, uh, everybody is with you, everything is going your way, lalo na sa sports, nananalo yung team nyo, magaan, magaan. However, if you're going to be honest with yourself, as a coach, ha, yung titirayin natin muna na yung coaches. Hindi nagsasalita ang atleta mo. May away sa loob ng team ninyo. Nagkakagulo ang teammates per team. Nagkakainggitan, nagkakatapakan. Um, name it, you have it. Jealousy, greed, pride is all there within your team. I'm going to ask you a question and you be, you be honest. How do you treat it? Coaches, tao rin tayo, di ba? May problema rin tayo. What would you do in a circumstance where you're having a lot of issues at home and then you are confronted with your team who's about to leave to, to compete on a high stake and then nagka-problema ang team niyo? How will you deal with that stress? Coaches, answer. Let's see. Actually, bringing your problem towards your team sometimes Sometimes it can be positive and sometimes it can be negative. However, being professional, you don't bring your problems from the house. 
to your workspace, right? In a perfect world, you need to calm yourself be first before talking to your team, correct? Correct. In contrast, mental health conditions can cause distress. Totoo yan. It impacts on day-to-day -day functioning and relationships and are associated with poor physical health and premature death from suicide. Okay, so we're going to be touching base on this word, suicide, okay? But it's important to remember that mental health is complex. There's a lot of complexity within the word mental health. The fact that someone is not experiencing a mental health condition doesn't necessarily mean their mental health is flourishing. Likewise, it is possible to be diagnosed with a mental health condition while feeling well in many aspects of life. Ultimately, mental health is about being cognitively, emotionally, and socially healthy. The way we think, pagisip, the way we feel, and develop relationships and not merely the absence of mental health condition. So, klaro na tayo to na. So, I have researched a lot of um, uh, YouTube uh, designated studies under, uh, under mental health awareness. There are scientists, there are artists, there are athletes, well known athletes. Uh, letting the world know where they're at. Okay? So, marami tayong mga atleta na undergoing a lot of mental stress. A lot of us are undergoing a lot of depression, anxiety, only because they have, they don't know what's going to happen for tomorrow. Lahat tayo, oh, I, will, I will say it again, lahat tayo may kanyang-kanyang ways to deal with problems. Some of us are stronger than others. Some are weaker than others. Some ignores and just keep on moving without dealing with the actual root, which causes a big lump, a big lump of problem that sooner or later it bursts. It will burst. So, ano tayo ha? Uh, ulitin ko yung sinabi ko. We are all born differently. Some of us can handle stress easily because we're, we're, we're stronger. Mentally, we're stronger. Emotionally, we're stronger. Physically, we're stronger. Others are weaker. Meaning to say, timid. Like, they're not as tough as, as they... they they're supposed to be or they're not built to be as tough so they these are the people who needs more support it doesn't mean that they're they're lesser of a person actually right and there's another group of people another group of people and i'm sure some of us are are part of this group of people now they pretend nothing is wrong they carry themselves blanked and pretend nothing's wrong. They keep on walking, running, competing, pretending nothing is wrong and no one can tell that nothing is wrong because they don't want to show it, okay? So they keep on walking on this lane until one day, isang araw, one day, isang araw, okay? Magburst yun kasi napuno na siya eh, puno. Gets nyo? So naglalakad, lalakad, lalakad, Wala tayo nakikita. The surroundings are, are just blind. Okay? But it, it will just come to a point where this whole wall of problems and, and pain and hurt and anger will just burst. Okay? Dito ang nangyayaring suicide. Ito yung nakikita natin na and hindi natin nakikita sa mga tao yung pala yun na pala yun okay unfortunately there are so many people who know how to carry themselves even through depression so within your athletes and i know some of you some of us okay i know some who are undergoing 
treatments after months of trying to find a, uh, a psychologist or a counselor. A lot of our athletes are going through that because of first lockdown, na wala ng trabaho magulang, wala ng makain, hindi makalabas ng bahay dahil lockdown. So, namumumlema ngayon tong anak because student athlete siya, hindi makapasok, na he, naging antisocial, he doesn't want to communicate with anyone, he just want to stay within his scope. How do we teach ourselves losing is okay? Because not everything in life that we want to have, we will have. Not everything that we want in our lives, we will have. We will be granted. So we have to, we, you know, you know, na lang natin because I cannot change. I can, as much as I like to change the world. As much, as much as I'd like to change the world to a better place, we can only control what we can control. Alam ko to, kasi lumaki ako, naginugulpe, kaming lahat. Naging number one ng kapatid ko na gumugulong sa hole number 18, hole number 9, sa wakwa. Pero nag world number one yan. So I've seen it. Okay, so how do I tell my players? How do I tell my fellow coaches around the globe? I have coaches around the globe. How do I tell them? Okay, my first question to you, how do you deal with losing? Okay, the best thing here is to always go back to one thing. Bakit mo nilalaro ang sports mo? That's the best thing. That's the best thing. Why do you do what you do? Why do you want to do what you want to do? Why, why do you do what you do? Kumbaga, kunyari ako si Coach Pat, bakit mo ginagawa yung ginagawa mo ngayon? Dahil mahal kong tumulong. That's my passion. Kahit na, kahit na mahirap, may struggle, kasi I'm, I'm doing my master's, I'm doing my medical, I have to see my specialist. I'm waiting for my kidney trans. There's so many things happening around me. 16 hours on the machine, my machine is there. So there's always, there's always challenges, great challenges around me, but still I do what I do because I'm passionate with it. I love what I do. I, 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 think, I, I think you can feel it, that I, I do love what I do, you know? And it, 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 it's, something that, it's something that no matter what, happens in front of you you fail or you succeed as long as you still you, you, your passion is there your focus is there you'll, you'll succeed you'll succeed you know ilang beses na ako natira na as a coach pa lang ako ha, as a coach back 2000 uh uh 2014 i started max it 2015 i was uh, completely stopped by so many coaches in the Philippines. <laughs> Grabe, na politika ako. <laughs> but then again, whoop, I do what I do because I love what I do. And I don't care. I'm going to do it. I'm going to help more. <laughs> See, kung, kung ganun ang sistema mo, guys, ha, teka lang, ha, I'm different from a lot of people. I'm very positive, okay? I'm very, very positive. Kahit na sabihin sa akin ng doktor, you've got six months to live, I'm still there singing. <laughs> okay? So I'm very different. Remember what Serena Williams said, everybody is built differently. Some of them are built thick and some of them are thin. Okay? And I'm fortunate enough because I'm thick. Okay? I, 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 I can push through no matter how hard. Because I always believe, I always believe in there's always a reason why God gave you that. I thank you, Coach J. Williams. Me also, I'm still waiting for my kidney. <laughs> right? So 2015, I was I was rushed to the hospital uh, thinking that that was it because I had pulmonary emboli to my lungs after being told that I've got IJ nephrophotism in 2014. 
2016, boom, I was rushed to the hospital again. They said, oh, you have cancer. And I had, right there and there, I had to stop working. There's always a reason why God is there, why, why God gave you whatever he gave you. It's a talent. So yung, yung mga atleta natin, talent yan, but some of them are forced to do what they're doing right now. I will repeat, some of your athletes are forced to do what they're doing right now. Believe you me, not one, not two, many of your athletes are doing what they really don't want to do. And some of you are teaching because you have to. It's an obligation. Some of you are graduates who, who wants to be a nurse or who wants to be a doctor or you wanted to do something else. However, due to poverty, you are forced to do something else that you don't really enjoy doing. So, lahat tayo may pinagdadaanan in a different level. You know, we as coaches, we as coaches have to have our very own struggle. Our, our very own struggle is, is, do we show our weaknesses by telling a person we have a problem? Do we have the right courage to go up to our colleagues and say, pare, tulungan mo naman ako, may problema ako. How many of us would do that within our coaches, knowing that we are the top coach? Diba? <laughs> so usually when a person comes up to us and tells us a problem, do we actually sit down and listen? No. Bad vibes ka pare. <laughs> yeah, I'm just I'm, I'm, I'm talking about realistic here. A lot a lot of us going through problems when we're going through a lot of tests and trials along the way. When we're up here, we have so many friends. Name it, you've got all the friends in the world. Pero pag bumagsak ka, ilan ang tunay mo kaibigan na hahawak sa kamay mo? Question lang. But not everyone has the same friends around us. When we are when we are lost and bounded and defeated, that will be the time in your life you will find who your real friends are. Because if you have ten now that you're on top, sometimes you don't have the family. Many, there are just few. I've seen a lot of my I've seen a lot of my friends who've lost their friends when they when they found out that they have COVID. This is, this is life, okay? The stigmatism, you don't, you, you know, it's hard, to, it's hard to express because it's still happening right now, happening within our community. Now, hopefully after this conference, you will find it in your heart that when somebody asks you to listen to them, open your ears, don't open your mouth. You open your ears, listen, don't talk, let them talk, let them cry, let them, give them, give them the floor, okay? It comes, uh, it comes in so many different forms. Sometimes, darating yung tao sa buhay mo na hindi mo kakilala, tapos yun lang yung makikinig sa'yo. Pero, you're one of the lucky ones that happens, but how many, how many children are committing suicide? In the Philippines, 53 a day. 53 a day. 50, that's the, the one that's recorded. What about the rest? What about the ones in the provinces? <coughs> oh, paano yung mga tao sa ibang probinsya? Diba? Malaki, malaking problema ang, ano, ang depression, anxiety sa Philippines. Sobra. And marami rin drugs sa Philippines. Imagine mo, isang araw lang nakahuli sila 1.3 billion worth of shabu hmm. sa Davao. Hmm. Hmm. Lucky ni the, the mayor took him out of his position. Oh. Sa Davao yan. Imagine how many, of the, how many rich kids and poor kids depends on the drug. Shabu. How many children in the Philippines nationwide is dependent on that drug? For them to be able to, di to dispose 1.3 billion worth of shabu in just one city, Davao. And I'm just not talking about Davao. Manila, how many times? Three times last week. So how many, how many individuals in the Philippines who are dependent on, on taking drugs just to make them feel I'm okay? Where in fact they're not okay.
you know, drugs can only eliminate a little bit of your emotion because it blocks it off. It blocks you from reality, feeling the emotions. <coughs> it blocks the it blocks you to feel the pain. Gets you off that zone, reality. Tinatanggal ka sa realidad. And that's the reason why people are taking drugs because they don't want to feel it. They don't want to face the truth. They don't want to do they don't want to face the fact in life. They don't want to go through the trials. They don't want to feel the trauma. That's the reason why they take drugs. Majority until they get uh, addicted to it. Marami tayong atletang ganun. And we're not just talking about athletes. We're, we have a lot of parents who are dealing with that. Then there are some coaches, there are some athletes who are who are serving the country as a army, army reserve, who are being abused by their colleagues. And yet, and yet, champion mindset, they still win medals for the Philippines, irregardless of how their colleagues within the barracks treat them. I am aware. I have been aware since last year. I have been aware since your assignments. And I will remember your assignments, each one of you, because I didn't finish checking it till December. And up to this day, I am still helping some. And I am aware. Okay, so always remember why you are a coach in the first place. You are not just a coach for the heck of it, to be called a coach. You are a coach for a reason, and you are a coach, and you have to carry that responsibility as a coach. Okay? And believe you me, I am expecting some coaches will hate my guts, and I don't really care. Because you know why? If you are afraid, to get out of that comfort zone of yours, thinking that you know everything, you will never be, you will never be successful. And I would stand for that. I would definitely stand for that. And hence the reason why I can be, I am able to work with all the top educators around the globe. Because I'm willing to, I'm willing to learn from them. Not because that you've been there longer than someone means that you're better than that person. No way. No way. God created everyone with a talent. And God is the only one who knows your timeline. You cannot dictate. You cannot dictate. But whatever talent that you have, whatever talent that you have, that is meant for you to polish, to best at it, the best way you know how. And if it's meant to be, you win it. To inspire, not to boast. To inspire, not to boast. To share, not to boast. But then again, I really hope all our, all of our coaches right here, they know the responsibility as a coach, no matter what. Kasi, di ko naman masasabi lang tayo ng mga coaches perfecto eh. Marami mga coaches talaga na una yabang. So magaling ako dyan. Maraming coaches na ganyan. Na no formal training, naging atleto, naging coach, magaling na. Actually, no. Your experience has to run or to walk side by side with educating yourselves. You know, it cannot be like your experience alone would entail the success. You have to educate yourself, build in your theory at the same time your 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 practicum. Kumbaga nasa 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 buhay yan eh. You know when you grade level 1 ka, level 2, level 3, level 4, grade 1, grade 2, grade 3, grade 4, di ba? So yung mga experience mo at natututunan mo sa pagsusulat ng libro. You know what I mean? It goes side by side. It cannot be just your experience without the theory. It has to be side by side. Hence the reason why I'm still studying. I'm still studying. So I, I would understand the conflict of my head. Because there's a lot of conflictions. There's a lot of conflicts. 
because of my experience ba basing uh, versus the psychology side of it. This is two different things. Kaya mga coaches, sana, you know, you, you know your place. You know your place. Keep growing. Learning never stops. So if there's a will, there's a way. Be the best person that you can be in every little step that you make. Don't go for that. Don't go backward. You walk forward all the time. Walk forward. Never stop. Never stop. Just keep walking forward positively. Always ask yourself when you're walking forward, am I doing the right thing? Am I improving? Am I perfecting what my, my craft? Am I inspiring others? Yun lang naman eh. Tama ba ginagawa ko? Masaya ba ako sa ginagawa ko? Hindi, hindi ba ako kontento sa ginagawa ko? Kasi when you're doing something and you're successful, you're inspiring other people right behind you. And sometimes those people are really in, the, in, need, in need of help. Now, what Naomi Osaka did was inspiring a lot of black women. You know? Michael, Michael Phelps is inspiring a lot of people. Everyone has their own challenges in life. There are a lot of bricks. There are a lot of bricks along the way. There are a lot of, um, you know, rocky bottoms along your way, along your life, maybe with your team, co-team members, your fellow coaches, your family, your closest relative. You, we all go through a lot of stress. Um, sometimes we, we, siempre, you know, hindi, hindi naman ako plastic and I'm not a hypocrite. I'm definitely not a hypocrite myself. Um, there, are, there are many times, there are many times when I wake up in the morning, I, f I feel like, you know, I feel like I can't stand up, like everything, what for? I only have 3% kidney function. I have cancer. I have chronic pulmonary emboli to my lungs. Why am I doing what I'm doing? Why do I still have to wake up in the morning? Um, you know, why I have to go through life the way that I did, the way that I have, how I wish. This is coming from me. Okay, this is real. Okay, I always ask myself, um, why did I have a life that I had? I could have had a different parent. I could have been born with a poor family um, instead of a rich family. I probably would have had a different lifestyle or a different, you know, a different um, uh, venture in life. You know, um, this is true. Like, you know, I, I may look very strong to all of you who can see me virtually. Um, I may look very like, you know, I'm so, I, I'm perfect. I'm very inspiring. I'm this, I'm that. But at the end of the day, I'm also human. Um, it's not every day that I'm perfect. I, I feel perfect. No, it's not. Um, most of the time I feel really lousy, really down because I, um, <clears throat> cause I'm taking a lot of medication and because of that machine, but without a machine, I won't be alive today. I won't be here. Um, I think it's more of for us to be to 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 keep going, to keep fighting is your passion. And God gave that to me back in 2016. Uh, just a short story. Hopefully, this will this will touch your hearts. Back in 2016, my husband had to fly off to the states because my brother-in-law passed away. He was actually fighting, fighting for his life in the hospital when my husband had to fly on emergency. At the same time, I was rushed to the hospital here in Sydney, to the hospital um, because of the, uh, the, the, the complication with my health. And I was told in the hospital while my brother-in-law was dying in his, in his coma, I was told here that I had six months to live. My husband was... Um, like the family of my husband didn't know what to do. And definitely my family wasn't there. Okay, so I was by myself, my, by myself in the emergency room while Dennis has had to deal with deciding whether to pull the plug or not for my brother, okay, my, uh, Rio. So that year when he came back from the States, he was, um, Rio was um, cremated. He came back here. I was still in the hospital, and the doctor said I had six months to live. 
to be honest with you, just being honest with you, I gave up. I gave up because I lost everything. I lost my house. I lost, I lost, I lost my position. I lost my success. I lost everything. And I was purely just sick. And I, I, I didn't know the reason why I hated the world. I hated, I hated everyone. I, I went to a point where I just want to dismiss everything and just end it. That, that was in 2016. So since I was told I got six months, we decided to fly off to the Philippines. And I said, okay, I still have the photos of those memories. I invited my, my, my friends, my closest friends from the, our mga artista close sa akin. I invited them. I told them, please wear red, white, white. And my family would wear red. I said, we will just celebrate birth, my birthday together. So I invited my band, my former band, to perform that night. And I was going to be singing with them. Actually, my intentions were to, yung intention ko that night was to say goodbye in a nice way. Like, my intention there was to say, thank you sa mga pagmamahal na binigay niyo sa akin all this time. My former coach was there. My, my colleagues from tennis was there. Mga artista kong barkada was there. You know, and the closest, uh, my closest family side, which is my husband's side, because I didn't have one in my family. So they were all there. And that was my message that night. Maraming salamat sa lahat ng nagmahal sa akin. Kung naging matigas man ang ulo ko, pasensyahan niyo na ako. But I was born stubborn. <laughs> And I, that was my, my purpose that night, to, to say goodbye and thank you because, but I didn't tell them. And you know how God worked in my life? One of the directors for the tournaments in Palawan Pawn Shop, and then he asked me, Di ba coach level two ka? During that time, I was only in level two. Sabi niya sa akin, Halika, we'll talk about this. You know, let's go to sa, um, General Santos. General Santos. Magturo ka for free, you know. To just just be there. And so I said to him, oh, I've got nothing to lose, but I have to bring my, my stuff with me. I have to carry my water, my, my little machine to warm up my water and then do my dialysis, you know. And, um, you know, when I went to General Santos, I... I, I, I <laughs> it never crossed my mind that I would be teaching hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people in front of me. There were so many coaches. There were so many players. There were children running towards you with no shoes on. Some of them had to sleep on the court. Nagtayo sila ng ano. Nagtayo sila ng tent ba? Para ug sa mga bata ba? Kay wa naman silang kwarta. Now I'm talking Bisaya. They didn't have any money so they had to stay in the tennis court. Uh, overnight because they didn't have enough money to pay for a hotel or to pay for a room for their children just to have just to receive a free free clinic tennis clinic from me and gosh I, I don't know how God did it but like um the the poster all over as soon as we got into General Santos it was just like it was huge it was just huge and I was just asking myself so what why why is so huge? Like, who the hell am I? I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm nobody. You know, I, I was asking myself, why is this? You know, when I'm dying, then you, you, then God shows you this. At the time, I, I wasn't thinking. I, I just, I was so depressed. I was like, stop this, you know, what for? You know, and um, do you know how many children went to, to my, that on that court, they had two courts in Jansan where uh, your former number one, Nino Alcantara, is from, right? So eh, there were a lot of trials. There were coaches from left, right, and center. The, the, the PTA was there. Um, the top coaches of the Philippines were actually attending. My former coaches also attended. Everyone and all the kids were there, and I asked myself that before the presentation because natakot kaya ako, dagan ka yung kwaan tao. There are so many people. Like what the hell? I'm so used to having both people in front of me. Like you know, you're in you're in control, but this time I wasn't in control. I was not in control that time because I haven't written my book. I, I I wrote my thesis, how to build an academy, but I I, I didn't build this. So I was asking. I asked. I prayed, 
Well, what do you want me to do? And all the word that I said, teach. That was the only word I, I, I heard that night, teach. Teach. <laughs> so I did. I taught. And it started there. Max Crank, it started there. Max Crankit Foundation started there. It taught me you cannot decide when you're going to go. You cannot dictate what your future holds. But you have to listen. What is your purpose in life? God completely changed my life. And God took away that depression and anxiety and hatred and anger. Of course, I hated everything. Who would not be? You know, you're, you're, you're four star. You're earning nearly 250000 a year in dollars. You have your own house. You have your own car with not a single cent from my parents. It was just me. Hard work. But you know, I've succeeded all the way to the top. Be, be the face of the Department of Immigration for two years in a row. You know, be on Sunrise 7 three, three years in a row. Patricia Albano Concon on the finest, you know, official DIB, BF. It, it was like on top and all of a sudden you take it away from me. Do you know what I mean? What have I done? You know? So all this time, all this time. And then that's when I started. I, I, I learned that, hey, my purpose in life is what? Inspire. Teach children, help children, help families. And time and time and time and time again, whenever I'm left alone, there's always a teacher from Dep Ed, from Maasin, from, I've been around the Philippines seeing all the poverty line. Children, how many children I've sent from the Philippines to here to Australia. And thank God I've been given, I'm so blessed. I have so many children, not my real children. <laughs> Not Filipino, <laughs> you know. And up to this date, the, the, uh, up to this date, I still am in touch with them. There are a couple I don't talk to, because you know, mga walang utang na Like I don't even want to talk about it. But then again, there are really people when you help them, they think they're they did it themselves. And you know what? One day they will realize no. God was the one who made that way for you. So that's how it started. That's how it started. That's where I am right now. And the same with Maxine. It's, it's exactly the same. And all of us, you know, it's not all about kailangan mag-champion ng Pilipinas para magkaroon tayo ng ano. Hindi eh. You have to learn how to, to love yourself first. Kasi kahit na mag-champion ng Pilipinas, pagdating naman sa Pilipinas, panibiritan, masaya ba tayo? Coaches, I'm asking you, masaya ba kayo pagdating sa Pilipinas? Wala ka na marinig kundi reklamo? Champion ka nga. Okay. So, yung nga eh, if, if we learn how to be satisfied with what little things we have with our athletes, with our peers, with our family, alam nyo, life could be much, much better and much, much and more, more peaceful. So, totoo lang. The reason why, hindi sa nagmamalaki to, Sir Chad is here. His son, Andre Lago, was sent here. And they know na pag-training ako, I am as hard as a steel, probably harder than a steel. I'm very strict. Very strict. Pero isang bagay lang, lagi kong sinasabi sa mga bata. I don't care na manalo kayo, matalo kayo, basta ibigay nyo lahat ng pinag-aralan ninyo dyan sa court na yan. You do your best. Be the best. Manalo matalo, okay lang sa akin. Basta makita ko ginawa niyo yung best niyo. And you know what? And enjoy. You know what? Laging champion. Thank you very much, Coach Pat, for this very significant discussion on building a great coach. Meantime, let's listen to the sharing of how a female coach who enjoys and survived a coaching life in a male-dominated sport. Here is Coach Precious Jimenez. Coach Precious has been coaching basketball since she was in high school until today as a coach in the Junior NBA Philippines and several collegiate teams. 
um, it was really out of failure. I let go of an opportunity that not anyone can have. I was supposed to play in WNCAA South, but then my parents are worried for me in living alone in Manila. So that's when I started coaching. So way back 2009, I was even pushed out of the premises and was even told that I am not supposed to coach because I am a female. And then the day comes, I went back to that place and proved myself. It's not that I will take revenge or something, but I just show them that I am better. I showed them the better version of me. And from that, for three consecutive years, um, that school was the second runners-up uh, in that league. And that was really a big deal because there were lots of public and private school who joined that league. And after that, there was so there was so many progress. I went till championship. And as a result of those coaching years from 2009, I produced players who played in WNCAA and also in UAAP. And for me, that is the most important thing, like paying forward, like helping the, the players on reaching their goals and grabbing opportunities that I was supposed to have before. So coaching is not just inside the court. Coaching is not just at the sideline. Coaching is also like opening up opportunities to those who deserve it. And of course, when you're given an opportunity, you really have to work hard for it. So 2015, I was nominated for the Junior NBA Philippines Top Female Coaches All Over the Philippines. And of course, well, I didn't expect me to win in that year. I failed, of course. I lost. But then the most important thing is that I worked with NBA players, WNBA players, PBA coaches, UAAP coaches, NCAA coaches. And that is really a privilege for me. After that, I joined again, of course. And I failed. I joined and then I failed. You see, giving up is not an option. You have to stand up and you have to learn and you have to execute more of what you got. So there you go. I became at last the coach of the year in 2019. And after that, I represented the Philippines as the coach of the year in Indonesia, in the Junior NBA Asia. It's um, the global selection. So out of those other female coaches from Vietnam, from Singapore, from Hong Kong, from Korea, I was the only coach who was asked to coach the basketball boys. And that was really a challenge for me because the coaches of the basketball boys are actually national coaches or professional players. And I get so nervous in our games, but then I set aside that nervousness. And of course, I did my best on every game and showed what Filipinos got. And then for all of those games, it's like a one day league. We never lost a game. We have to make it to the point that we never stop learning. We have to be surrounded by good people, good coaches, and listen to their experiences because that is the best way to learn something. And of course, here in the Philippines, we have to focus on the fundamentals in any kind of sports because that is the king of the game. We also have to focus on the grassroots. We have to be hungry on new knowledge. We have to be consistent, which will lead to a nice development. I'd always say, believe in dreams. But if we are going to chase dreams, we have to make it a day-to-day -day basis. We have to work hard, passionately, and be motivated all the time. 
we have to set aside those distractions because when we are chasing those dreams, we have to focus and also we have to get out of our comfort zones because we female coaches can do more. That was just a snippet of the one and a half day of discussion and sharing by Coach Pat during the recent Women Leadership and Coach Training and Seminar. Please also watch the airing in our upcoming episode, an extract of the session conducted by Coach Henry Saw during the recent Women Leadership and Coaching Training and Seminar. An edited but longer version of this seminar will be posted at our Rise Up Shape Up YouTube account. So please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube and Facebook account. Time is up for this week's Rise Up Shape Up episode. Thank you everyone for your support. Rise Up Shape Up is brought to you by the Philippine Sports Commission Women in Sports. Again, this is Clarissa, your host. Have a marvelous day, everyone.